morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. Our you in, it is October 11th. It's the second uh, weekend in October for you guys to enjoy all sorts of fun things that are happening this weekend, and not, not to mention many uh, news items hitting hard this week, including Milton the Cur uh, Category 3 hurricane that hit landfill in Florida, not to mention we have some news item related to, um, uh, let's see, uh, the monopoly that is uh, Google that's being taken over, not to mention a, a lawsuit over in East Missoula. As we go into the East, East Missoula developed, uh, development is under a lawsuit over pr approval of a 182 lot subdivision and annexation request. This was a major project that the county worked with developers on until they put it on the laps of the city of Missoula to rezone. Um, what started out as an easy win for developers is now involving into something a little more, more complex as citizens of East Missoula felt their voices weren't heard. Uh, the loophole being the private property in the county where communities like East Missoula, which runs under the purview of the county, but by giving it to the city, the city definitely had a lot more to say about this. So overall, the lawsuit alleges that the, deci the decision violated several sanctions of the city growth policy including livability safety housing community design and environmental quality petitioners raised concern over the increased traffic in summer street and health risks of clark fork river among others <coughs> aspire is the name of the development and plans to create 250 new dwelling units of mixed use for single family to five to ten plex family homes near the clark fork river with plans to build over the next 20 years the county plans to cover a thousand new homes for uh, a year for the foreseeable future to curb divan that has reached 1500 home deficit in the city of missoula through that lens the beggars can't be choosers and so far many areas are under the growth inward policy resulting in many of these modern projects that have come out since 2018. the missoula consolidated city county land use planning board voted to not recommend the project in early august uh, primarily citing the high number of ex exceptions to the zoning code requested by the developers. Thus, the city stepped in and put together a growth policy that is that the lawsuit uh, that resulted in the lawsuit because they claimed the city of Missoula ignored the impacts of East Missoula community in the decision. Also making the rounds in the news is the overall lack of affordable housing in Missoula, as the Daily Montana reported that wages up and housing just seems too far away. A 2024 report on labor in Montana said, quote, the average wage increase by Montana workers hit 57,230 in 2023, growing by 5% in one year. Additionally, the report said that typical home value in Montana averaged $470,000 in the first half of 2024. Mind you, that's a 70% increase in value during the last five years. And speaking of value, homeless folks are getting the ax in Bozeman as they move to ban urban camping with fines and jail time. Coming out of the Supreme Court decision to overturn District 9's federal decision on urban camping if all services are filled to allow public space as a last resort, and many took that uh, along with Missoula had major increase in urban camp use. The Bozeman City Commission voted Tuesday night to put an ex expiration date on the city's tolerance of people living in vehicles, campers, trailers, and tents on the city streets. The new ordinance includes stricter rules on generator noise, adhering to proper vehicle maintenance, disallowing camping near cemeteries, wetlands, and waterways, and fines for those who try to rent or facilitate urban campsites. Fines for $100 to $500 up to 10 days in jails for those who fail to comply. And overall, Bozeman now joins the city of Missoula, Billings, and Helena on cracking down on the urban camping in the wake of the controversial U.S. Supreme Court decision, Johnson versus Grants Pass, which was decided last April. Uh, from uh, Montana Free Press reporting, um, uh, Heather Granier, president and CEO of the Human Resource Development Council in Bozeman, said her organization has seen homelessness more than triple in Bozeman since 2019. Currently, she said about 409 people are homeless in Bozeman. The ordinance criminalizes urban camping in Bozeman starting November 1st, 2025. So as more and more people are out on the street, many more on the horizon uh, as Hurricane Milton's path left many areas in Florida damaged by the second uh, major storm in weeks. Hurricane Helene uh, is still dealing with the cleanup in, as some of the areas had upwards of nearly 30 inches of rain dumped over one night, making recovery efforts and cleanup much harder. The death toll reached 230 people this week across Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and Tennessee. Uh, Milton's Category 4 storm 
eventually turn into a Category thir 3 storm. Many weather expects, uh, experts expected the water levels to raise 10 feet, which covered the first floor of many commercial residential buildings. Also noted that about three feet alone could, could cause vehicles to float in the massive amounts of rain. And at least eight people were dead. Actually, uh, more of an update, they had at least 10 people were dead as of as I'm talking, but many expressed relief that Milton wasn't worse. The hurricane spared, uh, spared uh, densely populated the Tampa Bay area a direct hit and the lethal storm surge this, that scientists feared never materialized. This has something to do with uh, <coughs> the uh, reverse surge, which saw major uh, majority of the flood water being taken away, and ultimately the uh, center of east northwestern moving Milton made landfall Wednesday night as CS Decay near Sarasota uh, is about 70 miles away from the city of Tampa. The National Hurricane Center said Thursday that the primary data shows the water rose. Uh, five to ten feet above ground between Sarista Key and Fo Fort Myers Beach. So many experienced tornadoes in the area and in and around Milton as the storm passed over Florida. Eyewitness reports came as the National Weather Service has issued more than 120 uh, uh, tornado warnings for the state. And uh, annually the state sees about 50 tornadoes on average in the whole year. So. Uh, another item dropped this week with the Department of Justice officially calling Google a monopoly. The antitrust enforcers wrote in the filing, quote, For more than a decade, Google has controlled the most popular distribution channels, leaving rivals with little to no incentive to compete for users. Fully remedying these harms requires not only ending Google's control of distribution today, but also ensuring Google cannot control the distribution of tomorrow, end quote. U.S. District Judge Amit, uh, Amit Mehta uh, ruled that in August, the Google search engine has been illegally exploiting the dominance of its search engine to squash competition and stifle innovation. He has outlined a timeline for trial and the proposed remedies next spring and plans to issue a decision by August 2025. Many of the undertakings will include their, all their assets and designated companies under the umbrella of Google, one being YouTube. Prosecutors will then make their final uh, proposal March 2025 to make regulations around this tech giant. So big news happening. A lot of things happening in and around, but we're going to jump right over to our city council. And among the city council agenda includes the democratize, democratization of MRE expenditures beyond $50,000 requires a city council to vote on this. So Ellen Buchanan uh, for the MRE, uh, Missoula Redevelopment Agency Director, MRA, sorry, uh, spoke about this. So the, the program in general was created probably around, and I don't have the exact date, but I'm going to say like 15 years ago, 12, 15 years ago. There have been, a, it, and it started in Urban Renewal District 3. Um, it, the, the kind of background with this is that much like the commercial rehabilitation loan program that was done in downtown during the, the existence of the first Urban Renewal District, um, the language in state statutes allows for improvements to um, aspects of the public, re public realm and certainly the facades of buildings contribute to the public realm and the aesthetic of an area. Um, in, in, in the first urban renewal district, it was in the form of a, an interest write down on loans for commercial rehabilitation facade programs. Um, that ha it still exists in District 2. It hasn't been used in years, but it was created during the time of double-digit interest rates. Um, once interest rates c became so low, it was almost uh, not worth the effort to do an application to get an interest rate right down because it wrote it down to half the interest. We applied the same logic in District 3 and ultimately in District 2. Uh, with a facade program that actually caps out at $50,000 or 25% of what's being invested in the renovation of the building total, whichever is the smaller amount. So essentially, the uh, um, having the city vote on something that's worth more $50,000 or more kind of seen as unfeasible since most of the things that go through MRA are under $50,000 is what she means. And urban rural districts was created through uh, commercial slash business areas where businesses have invested uh, interest in the area and be developed beyond just building buildings. So Ellen talks about the complete list of projects that are available for public viewing and talks about uh, the MRA's complete list of projects they've invested in. I addressed the, the 690 projects. That's the entire 
project list um, going back to the very beginning of Missoula Redevelopment Agency in, in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, it's what we have online. It's a spreadsheet that, that basically lists every project that's been done. It was last updated online in, in 2022. We keep it updated constantly, but we haven't changed it online for, for a year and a half or so. Uh, so that's where the 2022 date came from. It was just when the last update was done. Thanks. So there, and, and also in the memo that I sent you earlier today, I looked at total projects for FY 22 and 23, and um, gave you an analysis of how many of those, how many projects came in front of the board requesting funding, and of those, how many would have been approved by the board the, by being 50,000 or under. So I think those numbers are in 22, there were 22 projects involving TIF funding considered by the board. Six were 50,000 or less. In FY23, there were 26 projects um, and seven were 50,000 or less. Okay. And so those are just kind of like an overview of some of the projects and some of the things that have been going on thus far. And Danny Carlino, who uh, co-sponsored this bill to uh, uh, to make uh, have this to have the city council vote on anything more than fifty thousand dollars, and this is what Daniel Colino had to say about this. Um, but really, what this resolution comes to is um, is trying to make it to where the voters of Missoula have a say in how their tax money is being spent. Right now, we have an unelected board that's spending millions of dollars a year of people in Missoula's tax money, and Missoulians can't vote them in or out. They have no say in how that money's gonna be spent. Um, and these meetings are happening at noon in the middle of our work day, where we're spending millions of taxpayer dollars uh, by an unelected board at noon. Um, and expecting the voters to somehow have a say in this um, is um, just not how it's currently set up. So we're trying to make it to where um, an elected board would have to approve these dollars. Um, be, um, and that way, Missoulians can vote us in and out, and that, or and you know, let us know um, how they like their tax money to be spent. Um, we hear all the time from from our constituents about uh, concerns over uh, their taxes going up, or concerns about where their tax money is going. And when people bring those concerns up to us that have to do with um, TIF expenditures or the MRA, um, we can cer certainly talk to them, but we have no authority on this matter because we've given up the authority to an unelected board. All right. And so that was uh, uh, Daniel Carlino's viewpoints on this item, and we had another person. And you know, some of the issues Daniel had with MRA being tied in with the budget, and once it, that is set, it cannot be altered. Other council members wanted clarity in the process and are concerned about the communication between the departments. Christian Jordan City Council expresses support for this resolution, and this is what she had to say. I regularly hear from them that they're frustrated with how the funding is allocated, especially when it goes to big corporations and banks. Uh, my colleagues who are against this update have stated that it would take too much of our time to approve projects and have said that there is enough oversight and expertise in the mayoral appointed board members to ensure fair and efficient use of TIF funds. However, that logic either overstates the capacity and abilities of the MRA or undermines the capacity and abilities of all other staff and departments who must come before city council to get their budgets um, and projects approved. So. Um, you know, I think we have a lot of staff capacity uh, within the city, but they still have to come to us and ask us if they can spend money. Okay. And so those are your kind of your major viewpoints back and forth, kind of seeing the idea, like a little bit of history of some of the urban renewal districts, which are strictly commercial business kind of areas, not necessarily impacting the residential very much like how the uh, Tourism Business Improvement District is very much about how a lot of businesses in town kind of pool their resources together to help move money towards an, um, an objective of promoting Missoula as a tourist destination. So Ellen um, Buchanan uh, essentially does, uh, how many times do I have to tell you this information to their faces? And this is what Ellen Buchanan had to say to them. I hear criticism of us helping to fund things like banks and hotels. These are the projects that generate the funding that we're able to use to build affordable housing and parks and trails and sidewalks in low-income neighborhoods. Without those larger private investments, we run out of money. We do not have the money to, to do these projects. And we've been very fortunate in our districts to 
you know, to, to have those investments being made, which have quadrupled and even more than that, the, the taxable value of pieces of property. And yes, they are corporate and yes, they are commercial private enterprises, but that's why we were able to put the money we've put into Karis Park, into the Riverfront Trail system, into Villaggio, into, I mean, the, the list is long and you've got a list that I included with the memo that I sent out this morning of, of the types of public benefit projects that we've been able to do in this city. Yep, and that is living in a capitalistic society in a public-private process with the city voted to keep the MRA intact as is. They are open to improving policies within the MRA for better clarity and community outreach programs. Speaking of these programs, I went out to film an open house for the Villaggio, which is affordable housing, the uh, fruits of the labor with all these TIF funds and available on our YouTube channel and also MCAT.org. We're skipping ahead to the Black Knight Security Service Agreement for the city as they move to cover Missoula Parks and Trails on top of enforcing the anti-camping ordinance um, for being a buffer for police use in the area. This encompasses the overall two-year plan to wrap up the Johnson Street Low Barrier Homeless Shelter. Low barrier necessarily mean they don't turn people away just because they might seem intoxicated. And very much like how the Palmer Rail Center is considered a dry shelter, Johnson Street Shelter is just to keep people out of the cold. Dan Carlino, City Council, wants security to wear cameras. And this is what he had to say about Black Knight. Yeah, I'm I won't waste our time, but I'm happy to um, do an amendment to require Black Knight security um, to wear body cameras as they're patrolling the streets um, if there's an appetite on council for that. But I know that we already voted on it on Wednesday, so I won't put it onto the floor right now. Um, but what we've done, I, you know, having security in a building is one thing. Having private companies patrol around all streets and parks um, to enforce the laws and ordinances is a completely different thing. We've basically created a private policing uh, through a private company. Um, and they can carry weapons, and they can um, tell Missoulians what to do, and they can enforce our ordinances. Um, and frankly, it should be a public entity that does that. Um, um, you know, if people are going to, if we're going to go through all the trouble to have our police officers wear body cameras, which I think was a good step in the right direction, I think we should also have other people that are patrolling the streets with weapons and forcing the law also wear body cameras. So if you all are open to that, I think um, that would help um, remedy some of my issues. Um, but frankly, um, I warned about this when it was Rogers International, um, that private companies would be a, a bad idea. And, and we saw what happened because of the lack of transparency and oversight. Um, we heard stories about about people being kicked as they were sleeping by Rogers. We saw in the news of them getting caught uh, with, with masks over their face, hiding their identities as they walk around with assault rifles, tearing down um, uh, people who are experiencing homelessness uh, tents. So that's what you all are, have approved, and, and I, I don't think it's right. I think we could do a lot, lot better. Uh, all right, and so that was Daniel Colino uh, voicing his concern and opinions on the, on the matter as well. Um, uh, Mind you that the masks at the time were definitely mandatory and a lot of people had to wear a mask at the time. But regardless of that, but most of the bad experiences with Rogers International Security resulted in Black Knight getting the bid in the first place. However, many reasons why the city didn't want to include cameras on the security was based on costs. Uh, and so Christian Jordan, city council speaks on the lack of oversight on this matter. P providing security for one of our most vulnerable populations without um, the oversight that the police, police department has um, and also without security cameras is problematic. Um, I do genuinely appreciate having Black Knight security in council chambers. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, it makes um, the whole room feel safer, but having um, private security out on the streets policing our most vulnerable population is not a good idea without body cams. Um, I'd love to find a way to find the money to make um, good police um, jobs that are you know, part of a union where they get paid a living wage. Um, and have the, uh, the oversight required to ensure everybody's safety um, in the future. Okay. All right, let's see. Look at what are my notes. Stacey Anderson, City Council responds to the uh, lack of camera as an amendment. This is what she had to say. We don't always um, lay bare all of the nitty gritty details and therefore allows for opportunities for folks to sort of fill in a different narrative. So um, I appreciate the conversations that we've had about this and I am happy with Black Knight. Um, 
And yeah, if we had the money to expand our police force, I agree with Ms. Jordan, it would be lovely to have them be union members and, and pay the living wage, but unfortunately those are not the um, budget abilities that we have at this point in time. So I'll be in support of this contract. Thanks so much, Madam Mayor. Okay. So the uh, necessarily the um, item moved forward without any fanfare and the city voted for security services to encompass the area in and around shelters, including parks and trails, to enforce the anti-camping ordinance. Thus, we uh, went on and continued over to uh, some other data related to the city has collected data over the last couple of years and have presented uh, various updates with services at or beyond capacity and being caught on a wait list. Uh, we have a regular here through the library who is dipped in out of homelessness pretty much all his life. And recently the hardships that have been a lot harder in Missoula resulted in his acquisition of shelter j just as far out as out of reach as housing was about five years ago. It's a lot harder to live in Missoula and has only gotten a lot harder for some of these folks as well. And some cleanup from this meeting includes agenda items that were passed through a bid of rehabilitating or replacing the aging lift station through the wa wastewater collection system. <coughs> the Kelly Island lift station was initially constructed in 2004 and serves in the Mullen area west of Missoula. This lift station discharges uh, into approximately 2.5 mile force main. Communities in the Mullen area continue to grow and expand and lift station requires improvements to increase capacity and redundancy. Uh, there's work in the private part, uh, private private public partnership since a project at 1.9 million dollars requires Missoula to get experts in the field to replace and expand these wastewater systems per requirements of the Montana Department and Environmental Quality EPA and other things for the Clean Water Act. So overall, this meeting was pretty thick, and we have next Monday off for Indigenous Peoples Day, meaning the library here as well will also be closed. So we're gonna jump right over to committee meetings. I only have one quote for you guys, and this is for support of various nonprofits in town, including International Coral Festival, Missoula Asian Services, and Missoula Economic Partnership. Kristen Hans, CPDI for the city, talks about these programs. The first one is with the International Choir F uh, Choral Festival for $12,000. This is to secure visas for choirs with immigration obstacles, rent concert venues in Missoula, hire technical services for con concert production, provide transportation, meals, and social events for participating choirs and host families, and coordinate choir housing with over 100 host families and, and a staff of over 100 volunteers. The second contract is for Missoula Aging Services. This is in the amount of $368,844.95. And this is to promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those that care for them. Missoula Aging Services is the voice of older adults and they provide programs and services in our communities, empowering people to age with confidence and without fear. And the third contract is with the Missoula Economic Partnership for $100,000, and this is to perform general duties to support growth and retention of existing Missoula businesses to enhance innovation, entrepreneurship, and support small businesses, and to um, and uh, to enhance the and diversify the local economy. Apologize for that. So Missoula is definitely known for many of their nonprofits here in town, and among them were those three. It's no fanfare, just community support for those three organizations of various impact in the Missoula area. And mind you, International Choral Festivals every three years, and is a very volunteer reliant when they do take place. And you know, fun fact, I did lead the International Choir Festival flag in 2006 when we went to the University uh, Dahlberg Arena to wrap up the week of concerts. That, that also was the first year that Mayor John Engen served, uh, began serving his uh, first year at his long tenure here at the city of Missoula. It's kind of funny how 2006 always strikes a nostalgia uh, with me as well. Anyways, uh, other than that, appointments to other items, including appointments and grants that I spoke about a long time ago, including the JAG grant, J-A-G, a grant which uh, went to services of victims of crimes, prosecutors, and law enforcement agencies. And we do have some fun videos from our summer camps I want to show you guys. And when I come back, we're going to talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. <coughs> you have this guy coughing up a storm. <laughs> Wizard. All right, 
So this right here is a teepee burner. They were designed in the 1940s and very common all across Western Montana. This is a very important piece in a lumber mill. Uh, what it does is, well, when you're sawing a lot of logs, when you're producing a lot of timber out there, you also produce a lot of sawdust and a lot of waste materials that need to be disposed of somehow. This right here is probably the cheapest and easiest way to do it. The TV burner at the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula was first used at the SMW Sawmill in Connor. It resided at Rivoli County Fairgrounds in Hamilton until 1973. It was moved to Missoula in 2006. Teepee burners were widely used across Montana until the Clean Air Act of 1970, when it banned them. Teepee burners also lost popularity due to the increase in technology, such as turning the waste into press board and paper. Teepee burners had many names, such as wigwam burners, beehive burners, and of course, teepee burners. Towering at an impressive 45 to 55 feet, there were once 11 TV burners in Missoula Valley. As you can see, these holes on the top of the TV burner are so that the smoke can leave, and this door right here is so that the workers can shovel in more sawdust and excess materials. Fighting the evil Skelly Men. You never steal our Bubble Hill, Skelly Men. <laughs> I will take over the Bubble Hills. Go, Go Robots! MCAT Animation Drop In Workshops every Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m., located in the Missoula Public Library, 455 East Main Street. I'll get you next time, Robots! Next time! Go, Go Robots! We are back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out this week. It is time for Pre-Critic, where I prejudge a movie based on absolutely nothing but my biases towards movies in general. Kicking things off is, you guys like Saturday Night Live. You know, it's been around for 50 years. Many generations have enjoyed the show. Welcome to the world of a one long take in the form of a movie that essentially is the setup for one of the biggest shows in late night, or definitely one of the longest running ones. A sketch show that each generation has an attachment to. We, so, we show the most boring origin story of producer Lauren Michaels as he tries to get the hippies, the yuppies, yippies, and all the other counterculture kids of the baby boomer generation that chose to create comedy rather than anything else in the 70s. Uh, then we got um, <clears throat> The Apprentice. Uh, you know the guy from that uh, reality show, uh, The Apprentice? Uh, well, we have once an apprentice who was an apprentice of a flamboyant persona created the man who would become the president of the United States. Um, spoiler, it's Donald Trump. But first, he had to become a real estate mogul he always wanted to be to impress his daddy. Enjoy his relationship with Roy Cohn as he fights through the 80s of drugs and business before uh, his death with HIV AIDS, not, you know, Roy Cohn. Uh, but we'll ignore all that and focus on the man who worked under uh, Red Scare Man, Joseph McCarthy, and prompted prompted up people to become the people we know and half the vote voting population just kind of goes with it. Um, then we got Piece by Piece. We have yet another Lego movie, but this one's a little bit different. It's an experimental documentary that is basically does a bunch of like your typical documentary stuff, but for um, 
artsy effect. They replaced all the characters with uh, Legos. Pharrell Williams from the song Happy and other things uh, gets an experimental documentary treatment that probably glosses over his relationship with the PDD. Uh, then we got uh, an anime movie came out this weekend. Enjoy yet another anime from a franchise that has wrapped uh, on paper, and the cartoon will continue for another year before the series completed in a world that is essentially where peop everyone has superpowers. They're all X-Men, but the main superhero best guy has retired, and some people want to be the best guy, but some wacky superpowered kids are going to have to stop the big bad guy who is, is just a cheap knockoff. Speaking of cheap knockoff, why not just rip off the entire X-Men altogether? Uh, then we got Bad Genius. Enjoy a coming-of-age thriller with a smart girl getting used by the popular girl to win at life through tests that the popular girl is just not up to snuff, but, as all the, but has all the connections to get the smart girl to help her cheat. These trailers always show the seductive side of rich people, as the smart people are used to the point that they themselves become the evil geniuses to turn the tables that have already been turned on their tables, and to get the grade and all the honors without doing the actual work, and then, you know, cheating is made to look a lot harder than actually studying, and so people just study anyway. So that's kind of like the, the, you know, the, the meaning of this movie is like, a lot of times when you show a movie about cheating, it makes it seem like cheating is a lot harder than it actually is, and then blah, blah, blah. Anyways, uh, The Silent Hour, after all, oh, cheaters never win, okay. <laughs> the Silent Hour, uh, after all these movies, I'm gonna need a silent hour. So this movie is essentially a cop and a uh, deaf witness he must protect at all costs. But the rub is, he's also losing his hearing and cannot function properly in the many shootings this movie is doing because his deaf gal saw something she shouldn't have seen. It would be more interesting if the deaf girl was thought to have heard something and the bad guys go after her not knowing until they catch her, revealing that it is their blunder that she was deaf the whole time, but then revealing themselves as bad guys in the first place. I would have actually watched that a lot more than this movie, where essentially just she takes out her cell phone, records the bad guys doing the bad things, but then it turns out to be, you know, more than just, you know, corrupt gangsters, but they're also fairly well connected in the police service, which is why he probably has to fight his own police force along the way. So it's a lot of those kind of movies. Yeah. I haven't seen one of those kind of movies in a while. There's always like, you got to protect the witness at all costs, and then action movie. All right, so those are the movies that are coming out this weekend. I have a brand new dub and stuff from the uh, 1954 movie, Suddenly, uh, starring, um, oh, geez, I, I'm blanking off the mind, Old Blue Eyes. So I'll let you uh, um, know when you know. Hey, Dad, I'm going to answer the door now. It better not be the police. Well, our ears were burning, and we're here. We're the police. Oh, you're not joking after all. No, we just got a couple questions about your husband. I don't know anything about nothing, and I'm not going to tell you anything about anything. Oh, but we're not just your typical officers. We are federal agents. Oh, perhaps that will put more stink on what we're about to tell you. Oh, oh, please, come in. Um, you're like the doctors of officers. Ah, uh, just what the heck's going on over here? Oh, hello, you must be the uh, man of the house. Ah, well, that's some kind of fancy badge you got there. It's shiny over there. Well, we don't get many visitors around here for no good reason whatsoever. So, why the heck are you guys here? Just looking at you, I don't know sheriffs wear uh, suits. We heard your son was involved with uh, crypto. Oh, yes, he dragged me along, too. I heard he made quite hey, the killing. Hey, is my daddy in trouble? Well, uh, maybe this isn't quite the... Well, the boy's gotta learn sometime. Better sooner than later, I tell you. What do you think? Oh, yes, I was an also investor in cryptocurrency as well. I even got a matching tattoo with my son, see? Very impressive. He must have made quite the killing. Well, I had about $5,000 left in my retirement, and I thought to myself, why not? I wouldn't say I made a killing. My grandpa made a lot of money. Oh, how much would you say that your grandpa made, or... Oh, you know the children. You think you make a little money? I do. He made a lot of money. Um... We're uh, introverted, and we're running out of a uh, social battery. Oh, don't you fret. I won't be here that long. I just have a couple questions for your uh, father here. Well, I was just there in the beginning. Oh. I had nothing oh, well. to do. Oh, no, there's nothing you did illegally, per se. Come on, guys. Um, what are they doing? No, d d just wait a minute. What are, you, what are you guys, what are you doing in there? I think you should leave. Um, you're not going to find anything in there. Well, I'm just looking for a couple loose servers. Do you have a boiler room? Perhaps something that's dry and cool for... Well, we're not a really tech family. Oh, I know. I'm just wondering about a couple uh, 
USBs, USB Cs. We didn't really find anything in this house. Oh, check if there's a thing in the shed. Uh, yes. Crypto can be quite elusive. Yeah, no servers in the crawl space. And you remember we checked out some of the buildings around the house. Nothing there either. Oh, yes. Unregulated currency. All electronics, numbers. <sighs> Pushing things around. Left and right, up and down. Oh, we don't know much about bleep bloops. You don't know anything. And I think you've known enough about what's going on here. I expect you guys to leave. Well, once we're done, the blockchain's led us to here. He wanted to turn the blockchain into a real chain. You know the worst thing about crypto? Is the fact that nobody can really pay back what was taken from our associates. So they gotta pay us personally to take care of this. Eh, I knew we shouldn't have listened to Matt Damon. Okay, we are back. Let's talk about some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula when, uh, before I wrap up my show. So without further ado, let's get right into it. If you're interested in doing th things out and about um, or want to enhance your uh, education, Lifelong Learning Center is a great uh, opportunity, including uh, learning Excel, Microsoft Excel. They're doing level two just to have a little bit more intensive learning environment. It, it does a bunch of these classes and more, so you can uh, build up your resume and uh, just pay per class. Uh, Stroller Strides, Mommy and Me workout classes, every uh, d pretty much every weekday at 9.30 at Bonner Park. Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium. They have the open hours starting at 10 a.m. It's a great opportunity for a lot of kids and their parents to check out some bugs and get exposure to some of the butterflies that they have there that are always uh, brooding and having new uh, butterflies every two weeks. Um, uh, family fun time at Mismo, YMCA, Get Air, and Roots Acro Sports Center. These are a great indoor activity fun as the weather gets a little bit colder outside uh, around 10 a.m., 11 a.m. in most places. Uh, these are great opportunities for kids to be active while staying indoors. Missoula Food Bank and Meal Distribution started at 10 a.m. Great way for you to get cheap, nutritious food. Uh, and they do not discriminate based on an economic background. Uh, Tiny Tales is happening um, every Friday at 10.30 a.m. They also have story time every Saturday at 10.30 a.m., which lets out and has our dance party on Saturday at 11. <coughs> um, lunch at the Missoula Senior Center. 11.30 daily, Monday through Friday, is a great way for uh, seniors to pay $8 for a full lunch meal, hang out, enjoy the best dance floor in Missoula at Missoula Senior Center. Um, also, Pavarella also has their own lunch time at 11.30, and this is a daily thing that happens every single day, 24-7, uh, seven days a week. They have breakfast, lunch, and a dinner time. You can check that out by going to Pavarella Center's online website and more. Yarns and watercolor at noon every Friday. Uh, on the fourth floor of the Missoula Public Library, a great way to get uh, crafty. All Abilities Art Club, and this is for people who with uh, disabilities, physical or mental basis, a great opportunity for them to get involved. They also have an improv comedy troupe that goes through bases. It, it, I do highly recommend that for, for folks who suffer from uh, any kind of tisms, uh, looking to get uh, some community out of it. Uh, Lego Club at 2.30 p.m. every Friday at the Missoula Public Library on the second floor Imaginarium. Uh, Writing Coaches of Montana Volunteer Workshop, Missoula Public Library, if you're interested in supporting local students in public schools. This is geared for grades 4 through 12 across the many disciplines in Western Montana classrooms. Coaches do not need to have a background in professional writing. Rather, they need to be supportive community members willing to listen to students and be trained in simple yet uh, act effective listening and communication strategies which encourage student growth. Uh, so you just want to be a, a critical uh, um, Rece uh, critical uh, critics, essentially. So they also have a youth adult writers group every Friday at 3.30 p.m. for uh, the young artists looking to become a writer. Uh, Missoula County Legislative Candidates Forum at the Missoula Public Library is happening on the fourth floor at 4 p.m. today. So if you want to learn how who's going to be uh, running in various elections, local or statewide, it's going to be at the fourth floor library. They invited a bunch of candidates to show up and see who's going to show up and talk about their stuff here in Missoula. We might get uh, County Commissioner Josh Slotnick going against uh, uh, running um, <coughs> against, uh, uh, God, I can't remember his name, um, <laughs> Chris uh, DeCool. Yep, that's right. He's running against uh, Josh Slotnick. Uh, addressing wild, uh, wildlife vehicle conflicts in Montana. 
uh, the University of Montana 32 Campus Drive Todd Building. This is part of the MOLLI program, M-O-L-L-I. And MOLLI program is geared towards people or non-traditional students who want to continue education and work with instructor Daniel Anderson. This event is free for all MOLLI members. You can go to umt.edu slash MOLLI to learn more. Several decades of incredible research in North America have demonstrated the uh, efficiency of wildlife crossing structures and it'll be and one of the pictures that they showed was the crossing near Ronan that little animal bridge that they did there bringing these solutions to the ground in rural communities in Montana however is often easier said than done so they're going to talk a little bit more about this stuff uh, how to live with nature and how to uh, deal with uh, nature that you might hit with your car mommy and son dance classes you know how they always have daddy daughter dates at dances and stuff now doing a mommy son dance um honestly it would probably be a lot better if they did like a paintball war with mommies and sons i think that would be a lot more togetherness but then at the same time that's just my opinion but uh, garden uh, city Li uh, life center gym at 1515 fairview avenue at 5 30 p.m it's a mommy and son dance <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> I'm getting all choked up, literally. <coughs> Good Old Fashioned is going to be playing some folk music at Imagination Brewing Company tonight at 6 p.m. Missoula Folklore Society is doing some English country dance at 7 p.m. at Elks Lodge Ballroom. The Skibbity MFN uh, Biggity Experience is going to be playing some hip hop at Studio 2 Studio. Uh, Suite 2 Studio, which is uh, just off of the uh, 3rd Street next to uh, the uh, railroad tracks. Uh, John Floridas at the Old Post at 7 p.m. Uh, Little Shop of Horrors is going to be performing their, uh, I think this is, might be their season opener. I might be wrong, but Little Shop of Horrors, Missoula, Missoula Community Theater is going to be happening all week along next weekend as well. They're going to have 7.30 evening shows. They have 2 p.m. matinees, and then they have an earlier evening show on Sundays at 6.30 p.m. Little Shop of Horrors, as well as you know, is there is a meek, uh, a meek florist who is in love with his coworker who is in an abusive relationship until one day a mysterious alien plant comes down to earth and becomes a sensation in their um, shop in which uh, Seymour, the meek uh, protagonist of the story, uh, basically comes into instant fame, uses that fame to get the girl while at the same time um, murders <laughs> uh, the, the gal's uh, abusive lover and a bunch of other people along the way and then eventually uh, you know, turning the tables on even the plant who uh, just basically wants world domination. So enjoyed that uh, musical Little Shop of Horrors. It's always a fun play to do, and I'm always excited to see how they do the animatronics towards um, Audrey, too. So anyways, Tricks and Treats, a spectacular queer variety show at the Zootown Arts Community Center uh, tonight at 7.30 p.m., Wild Ducks is going to be at Cranky Sam playing some bluegrass music at 8 p.m. Truth and Yoko, a 360 audio and visual experience, electronic music at Monk's Bar starting at 8 p.m. tonight. Cash for Junkers is going to be playing at Union Club. Cow Bleep, Kate and the Hot Shots is going to be at Sunrise Saloon at, uh, 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 playing some country music at 9.30 tonight. Still Gone is going to be at the top at playing some funk music. And as, always, as you must know, it's homecoming week this week, and Saturday we're having the homecoming parade kicking off at 10 p.m., including a 5K homecoming fun run featuring Montana BRS and Western Cider. Story time at 10.30 a.m. here at Missoula Public Library, Moon Randolph Homestead, open hours at 11 on Saturday, museum tour at Missoula Art Museum at 11, tamales de polo con salsa verde, so learn about how to make uh, tamales and more at the Live Learning Center at 12 noon on Saturday. Um, Missoula Violin Lessons, Try a Fiddle, a Missoula Public Library on the fourth floor if you're ever interested in that. Women-led Intro to Car Maintenance Workshop. This is going on all weekend long on Saturday and Sunday at noon. Missoula Urban Devel uh, Ur M MUD, Missoula Urban Demonstration Project, is doing a women-led Intro to Car Maintenance Workshop. So want to learn how to fix your car without taking it to a mechanic? This might be the place for you. Learn to sew pillowcase crash course at a confident stitch. Uh, and then we're going to kick things off here at MCAT with our Saturday drop-ins, which we do every Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, stop animation, movie making, editing, fun audio experience. Uh, Makerspace Electronics, um, Ar Ar Arduino for everyone is going to be in Missoula Public Library uh, at 3 p.m. at the Makerspace on the first floor. Haunted House, they're doing a haunted house at uh, 11620 Porter in Missoula near Frenchtown. It's a haunted house which is going to be happening on the 12th, 18th, 19th, 25th, 26th, and 31st, basically Saturday, Sunday. Um, every weekend, uh, 
leading to Halloween. So it's going to be at 7 p.m. to about 8, uh, uh, 7 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Uh, um, in Missoula, near Frenchtown. So anyways, The Benevolence is going to be playing at Imagination Brewing Company, some rock music at 7 p.m. on Saturday. Montana Drag Wrestling presents The Mysterious Melee, so they're doing some drag slash uh, wrestling at the Zootown Arts Community Center Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. They got karaoke at West Side Lane, Must Side Charlie at uh, Union Club, uh, Spills at Lives at Monks, uh, playing some rock music. Clint Reminen and Band is going to be at Sunrise Saloon. And Chris Moon every Saturday uh, at uh, the Badlander at 10 p.m. Then we got a free show, Lark at the Top Hat, playing at 10, 15 p.m. on the Friday night. I mean, Saturday night. And um, <coughs> as we uh, move on to our Sunday, uh, they're doing some pumpkin painting for the Pavarella Center at Draftworks starting at noon tomorrow. Uh, they also have a uh, program for pain savvy health literacy here at the Missoula Public Library every Sunday at 1 p.m. Missoula uh, Family Fun Clay Day at Wildfire uh, Ceramic Studio. The Perfect Pour, 2 p.m. on Sunday. They're doing a Zach Theater show. Embark on a playful journey in the Perfect Pour, where mastering the art of pouring tea becomes an extraordinary adventure with puppeteering, juggling, balancing acts, and captivating storytelling. This one-hour show is a lively and entertaining experience for all ages. Whiskey and Poems. You like whiskey and you like poems? Mon the Montgomery Distillery is doing it at 3 p.m. on Sunday. Home Resource is doing their sustainability auction. So if you missed the uh, uh, first Friday, last Friday, where they showcased all the stuff you have at the Missoula Public Library, they're going to be auctioning off all the items that were recycled and reused to raise money for Home Resource. So it's going to be an auction at 4 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, all Bluegrass Jam, they're doing a jam session at the Imagination Brewing Company on Sunday at 5 p.m. You also have some soul food at Garden City Harvest Barn at 5.30 p.m. Um, uh, we also have Zootown Witch Walk, so if you're interested in the spooky scariness and you like being a witch, at 6 p.m. on Sunday, they're doing a uh, Hickens to Hipstrick and back downtown. It's a spirit of spook season and another neighborhood witch walk. The purpose of this event is to promote fun and community. Put on your favorite witch, warlock, and sorcerer gear as they take a stroll around town. And they also have an after party at Monks starting at 6 p.m. as well. Sunday night jazz at Draftworks. The Jazz Collective at Draftworks Brewing Company at 6 p.m. on Sunday. Then we have uh, Astrophysics at 6 p.m. at the University of Montana Payne Na um, Native American Center. A journey through existence starting at the smallest building blocks going all the way up to the largest view we have in our own known universe. <coughs> Oliver Hughes is going to be there at 6 and 7 p.m. for October 13th, November 22nd, and December 20th for these uh, basically once a month events. And then we have Open My Comedy at VFW at 8 p.m. on Sunday and followed by some karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon, 8.30 p.m. Thus concluding your Sunday of fun and all sorts of activities have this weekend. There's plenty of pumpkin patches open this weekend as well. I might go check out Turner Farms because they always have a pretty banging pumpkin uh, uh, pick over at their pumpkin patch. So without further ado, uh, I want to let you guys go and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, it is going to be, it has been unseasonably warm here in Missoula and so I expect uh, things to be looking pretty good. Let me actually just check the weather app just one last time before um, I let you go real quick. And even in today's weather, it looks like it, the high is going to be 70. Saturday is going to be clear skies with a high of 73. So we're going to have a really nice weekend going until next week. And then it seems like uh, as soon as Thursday hits next week, we're going to start seeing highs in the 47 and lows in the 38. So it's going to get pretty cold outside next week. So this weekend might be one of the last weekends that'll be nice, but I said that last weekend. So uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. Take care, guys.